You're listening to Sustainable Colgate, an ongoing dialogue connecting the Colgate community, upstate New York residents, and the local ecosystem through current environmental issues. By connecting with fellow students, professors, and members of Madison County, we hope to raise awareness and promote a more sustainable community. We're your hosts, Amory Heinrich and Laura Wood. Purchasing carbon offsets to mitigate the effects of climate change is gaining popularity. Colgate recently embarked on a forestry-based carbon offset project in Patagonia, Chile. But what exactly is a carbon offset? How do they work and what types of offsets exist in today's markets? This podcast answers those questions to help understand how and why the university came about the decision to purchase offsets through Patagonia Sur. Joining us today is John Pamelio, Colgate Sustainability Coordinator, followed by Bob Turner, Professor of Economics and Environmental Studies. Both played leading roles in the Carbon Offset Committee. Thank you for joining us, John, and we really appreciate it. So our first question is, what is a carbon offset? Well, a carbon offset is um, anything that you can do to either sequester carbon, remove it from the atmosphere, or avoid putting it in in the first place. So um, where it's really beneficial is if you have an individual or an organization that really wants to reduce their carbon footprint, and at the, uh, given their best efforts, at the end they're still left with some things that they can't do anything about. So then they'll look for projects away from their organization. In the case of Colgate, it would be someplace off campus that is implementing a project to either sequester carbon or to avoid putting it in in the first place. And that's, in a nutshell, what a carbon offset is. So what types of offsets are there? There are many, many types <laughs> of offsets. And that's a good question because you want to be pretty clear on what you're looking for. The most common types are uh, renewable energy projects. So you could purchase offsets that um, will help to support the construction of wind turbines, for example, or install solar panels. There's a lot of work being done with methane, methane capture and recovery, especially at landfills. So instead of just having the methane from landfill go into the atmosphere, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, you can channel that methane uh, combust it and it can produce electricity and uh, waste heat and um, in fact our own county landfill is already doing that and that could be another type of offset project and then of course there's all the forestry based offsets them either uh, stopping or reducing uh, clear cutting or an offset could help fund a reforestation project is there anything that makes one offset more legitimate than the others uh, there are, and there are a huge range you know, of different types of projects out there. One of the things that I always look for um, in offsets is, is there a third-party certifier? And that usually distinguishes you know, a, a high-quality offset from just a, a regular one over the market. Um, the verified carbon standard and the gold standard are two you know, really good certifiers that you want to look for in any project. I always look for VCS certified or gold standard certified carbon offsets. So through this partnership with Patagonia Sur, what types of offsets is Colgate going to be purchasing? We're purchasing forestry based offsets. There's uh, land that's been uh, degraded in a very uh, ecologically sensitive area of Patagonia, Chile. This project will reintroduce native species to the area. Um, and hopefully restore ecosystems while at the same time sequestering carbon. So that's um, it's a project that we're pretty excited about. And what specific aspects about Patagonia Sur made Colgate land on that project as our carbon offset one instead of other options that might have been available? Yeah, that's a good question um, because there are so many choices out there and um, we explored many different types and I think one of the things that we all liked about forestry offsets where the co-benefits and in a project like this um, you're not only sequestering carbon but as I you know mentioned a, a minute ago um, you're also creating uh, eco you know ecosystem restoration basically plus the project um, is creating local local jobs and 
the organization Patagonia Sur is doing pretty good social social work in in the area. They have a what's called the Patagonia Sur Foundation and uh, proceeds from the offset projects as well as some of their other activities go to benefit local uh, people in the local communities. So um, for all of those reasons, uh, we felt that that was important um, personally. I think that forestry-based offsets have been way underappreciated in the offsets market. People are tending to focus on renewable energy and a huge part of our global emissions comes from deforestation and not paying attention to the way we treat our forested lands. And I thought this would be a way to help raise that profile, at least at our institution. And you traveled to Patagonia in January. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Um, it was um, a lot of fun. <laughs> it's an amazing place. Mm-hmm. Um, we met a lot of the people who work for Patagonia, sir. Everyone that we worked with and met while we were down there was Chilean, and they uh, wholeheartedly believe in this project. They think it's a, it's a great project for their country. They are very thrilled uh, that Colgate is a part of it. We saw the Colgate Forest by the way. We went in and at this point in time there are about over 30,000 trees that are now in the ground growing as we speak, sequestering carbon as we speak and um, we compared that to mature forests that we saw and um, so we can kind of get a glimpse, a vision of what the Colgate Forest will look like. Our visit down there confirmed that this is a good project and something that we we really want to be a part of. And Colgate's sort of ahead of the game in terms of universities purchasing offsets. Why did Colgate decide to make this decision now? Yeah, the mantra is um, reduce what you can and offset what you can't. And I think what Colgate decided to do is reduce what we can and purchase offsets right now. (laughs) So instead of pushing it off to the future, um, we decided to go a little more aggressively. So we're going to continue to have to keep purchasing offsets, and will we keep doing them in Patagonia, sir? We have a commitment to be climate neutral. So as long as we're emitting carbon that we cannot uh, reduce or eliminate on campus, we will have to purchase offsets. Um, The Patagonia, sir, project offsets about a third of our footprint. We think we can, in the near term, within the next couple of years, eliminate almost another third of our footprint, which leaves the final third um, that we have to do something about, um, and that's probably purchase more offsets. In all likelihood, that will not be Patagonia Sur again. We want to do something more local. Now we would like to welcome Professor Bob Turner to discuss Colgate's exploration of local offset options the university's rationale to purchase through Patagonia, sir, and some common critiques of this decision. So thank you again, Professor Turner. Um, What was your role in Colgate's decision to purchase carbon offsets? I had two roles, I guess. I was the chair of the subcommittee that worked on offsets. Uh, And so we investigated the general issue of whether Colgate should explore purchasing offsets as part of its mitigation plan, Uh, and then once we decided that that did make some sense, um, we also investigated different possibilities for doing that. Somewhat separate from that, I was involved in conversations with Warren uh, and Patagonia Sur about their specific idea, and and so I was involved in some of those discussions um, that ended up deciding that was a good way to proceed. So what were some of the local carbon offset programs that Colgate explored, and why did the university end up choosing a project in Patagonia? When we looked into offset projects, uh, we did have, going into it, a um, preference for looking for things nearby, uh, because at least some people thought the educational value of doing something close to campus was better than something far away, and also because of an interest in the co-benefits of these projects for the uh, local economic development. Um, So we did look around at what could be done locally. And what we found is that the two kinds of projects, both methane recapture projects, uh, either capturing methane from landfills or doing more or less the same thing, 
um, but the source of methane would be from local farms. And then it turned out that in order to make any of those methane recapturing systems work, the scale you would need to make that effective was just too big for Colgate to do on its own. So we explored briefly whether we could form a consortium of other institutions around, and that just didn't, there wasn't anybody to form a consortium with. Um, so the local part kind of disappeared. Interesting. Um, and has Colgate gotten kind of any criticism for choosing some somewhere as far as Patagonia, Chile? Uh, there was certainly a lot of debate while we were in the process of deciding to do that. I assume some of the complaints have, are still out there. But to the extent that part of the whole package is the possibility of sending people from Colgate down to Chile, there's obviously a significant amount of carbon that would get emitted in the process of going down there. And so that seemed a little bit weird. There are uh, some complaints that are specifically about an American company coming in and buying up a lot of land in Chile and having a, an unfortunate relationship with the indigenous people there. Um, the company, Patagonia Sur, is sure that's not happening. Uh, Colgate was convinced of that argument, but it's still something that some people are worried about. Um, and partly it's just it would have been nice to be able to take a field trip with a class to something local instead of something far away. So the, those are the criticisms I've heard anyway. And on the other side, what do you kind of see as the uh, co-benefits educationally for Kuwait students? Well, I think there are some really interesting aspects of this particular operation, which provide at least possibilities. And this forest is getting grown, you know, with our name attached to it. It would be good to have Colgate be part of the monitoring process of that forest. And if some of it could be done with remote sensing, then so much the better, because then you're not having the carbon emissions of sending somebody down there physically. <clears throat> but the, the various co-benefits of the Patagonia Sur operation include some economic development of a pretty remote part of Chile that's either good or bad, depending on the nature of that development. Some, so studying that, that aspect of their operations would be pretty interesting. This isn't specific to be Patagonia Sur, but just to have offsets be part of Colgate's plan, I think provides a good educational opportunity to talk about the relevant advantages and disadvantages of offsets. And what are some of these kind of criticisms and downsides of offsets? What are What is the controversy? The way it's usually phrased is Colgate is rich enough to just be able to kind of buy off its obligations. The, the simplistic version of that, which is what I've just said, doesn't hold water very well uh, once you look at it a little bit more carefully. But there's still there's some sense that maybe by purchasing offsets, Colgate wouldn't be working as hard as it could itself to reduce the on-campus emissions. I think the flip side of that is that the more mitigation Colgate can do, the fewer offsets it has to buy. And so having this agreement to purchase might actually provide the incentive to cut back on things because you wouldn't have to buy those offsets anymore. There's been some debate about uh, forestry projects in particular as offsets because of the difficulty in monitoring and confirming that it's really a true uh, carbon reduction in the long haul. Um, but I think Patagonia Sur's version of this seems to have the relevant safeguards in place pretty well, and they're working with the most important, probably the most important international uh, agency that is certifying projects like this. So nonetheless, some people are not very happy with the notion of growing trees instead of cutting back on some actual emissions. Were you initially a skeptic, or are you always...? No, I'm, I've always thought offsets made a heck of a lot of sense, because climate change is the same regardless of where emissions happen. And so if it's easier, cheaper, more effective to do something in Chile than it is here, why should we do it here instead? I do think offsets are a sensible part of the package of things, uh, that this particular project seems to have some nice benefits to it, um, but it's one that we want to actually continue to pay attention to and monitor to make sure that things are as good as they seem to be. Great. Well, thank you again for okay. meeting with us. Thank you for listening to Sustainable Colgate. To learn more about carbon offsets through Patagonia Sur, be sure to listen to the Patagonia Sur podcast. Also, follow Colgate Sustainability on Facebook and Twitter.